Hello everyone and welcome back to the 13 Nights of Magic, a series dedicated to bringing you the most horrifying tales from MTG in celebration of this Halloween season. In tonight's spooky story, we'll be examining a creature type which has been striking fear in players for years now. Their ability to swarm is unmatched. I'm of course referring to the terrorizing tribe known as Slivers. Slivers are strange creatures whose bodies are viscous and insect-like in nature, but also malleable and susceptible to change. They range in size, some are as small as slugs, while others reach sizes several times larger than an average human. When it comes to slivers, I guess the key descriptive word would be variety. They can come in virtually endless amounts of variations, different colors, different sizes, and different abilities. Slivers as a species have mastered the art of evolution, granting them a wide array of abilities that differ even from those of its own hive. These different abilities are what makes slivers such a huge problem to the people who are forced to share lands with these beasts. There's never a single surefire way to kill them all. To make matters worse, slivers communicate through something known as the hive mind. It's kind of similar to how ants operate. The lesser ants are told what to do through the pheromonic commands of the queen. In this case, slivers don't use scent, but rather, they're telepathically connected to every other sliver from their hive, from which all are commanded by the hive's queen. The hive mind doesn't just allow the slivers to communicate with one another, it also allows them to share their abilities with other slivers near them. Two slivers from the same hive may be dramatically different from one another, but through the hive mind, they can meld together. Let's say you have a Talon Sliver who has First Strike, come near a Wing Sliver who has Flying. Well, through their Hive Mind, the two pass their abilities between them and they both would have Flying and First Strike, making them both twice as deadly. Certainly Volrath, a leading figure in the army of the Phyrexians, noticed how these evolving creatures could be used as a deadly force. On the Phyrexian world of Wrath, Slivers were a native biological species. Volrath used their hive mind to his advantage, creating a signal which matched and controlled their queen, granting him an army of slivers. Volrath set his new army against Karn and the Weatherlight, a giant airship constructed by Urza to fight the Phyrexians. Karn, prior to obtaining his spark and becoming the first artificial planeswalker, was searching for the legacy a collection of artifacts which were in essence a part of his own being. When these slivers attacked, the ship and its crew looked like they were about to be swarmed, but luckily, the Weatherlight had some really smart people aboard. They discovered the secret of the hive mind and managed to end Volrath's control over it. This freed the slivers who began following the orders from their true queen, leaving Karn and the rest alone. This wouldn't be the last time Karn would interact with the slivers, however, for the legacy Karn was searching for was in fact stolen by Volrath. While he had control over the slivers, he hid the collection of artifacts deep into the creature's hive, believing the beast would prevent his enemies from recovering them even if he somehow lost control. Karn discovered the location of the legacy and decided to move forward regardless of the risk to himself. The legacy was not only tied to the fate of Karn, but all of Dominaria as well. The items here would prove necessary should his home wish to fend off the upcoming Phyrexian invasion. As Karn entered the hive, the chattering and clicking of the slivers could be heard from the dark edges of the cave. Though they tracked Karn's movement, they did not interfere. It would seem the sliver queen wanted to meet with this metallic man. Karn reached the deepest level of the hive and came face to face with the giant queen. She stood well over him. Her power was known to all in the hive, even Karn. The queen, unlike her followers, seemed to have some level of individual intelligence, calling out to Karn in a language he could understand. The queen asked Karn if there was any reason why she should let him live. Karn tried to explain to the queen the true meaning of the legacy to him. It wasn't just a collection of random trinkets and doodads, it was in fact a part of himself. He made the connection that he and the Legacy were a lot like the Queen and her slivers. They were both a part of one another. Realizing that her slivers were as much a part of her as the Legacy was to Karn, the Queen allowed him to retrieve the objects and leave unharmed. This show of compassion, however, was not returned to the slivers, for their extinction would come when Volrath began his invasion of Dominaria. 
Using the Wrathy overlay, he managed to merge the Phyrexian world of Wrath with Dominaria, fusing the planes together. When this happened, the hive of the slivers appeared deep within a volcano on Dominaria, ending their species. Hundreds of years later, scientists on Dominaria discovered ancient fossilized remains of the slivers. They decided it would be a good idea to harness their tissue and resurrect the species for research. Because bringing deadly animals back from extinction never ended badly for anyone. Well, in their foolishness, the scientists didn't revive the sliver queen, leaving those they did bring back leaderless. Without a queen to control the hive mind, the slivers rampaged across the plain, killing, feeding, and multiplying unchecked. Dominaria at this point was in a state of pure turmoil. Between the slivers and the conflicts which were already going on at this time, it appeared that the plane was headed to disaster. All this eventually met its pinnacle at a giant final battle of the plane, at which many slivers had converged on mistaking the magical essence for the call of their deceased queen. During this battle, known as the Battle at Avaru, most of the slivers were slain in a massive magical explosion meant to finally end the conflicts. While a majority of the slivers did perish, a select few managed to survive. With nothing left of their species, these few mutated together to make the ultimate manifestation of the hive mind, the Sliver Overlord. From the Sliver Overlord, new lineages of slivers would be born. They swarm now, unmatched in their ability to evolve and adapt. Slivers infest a number of different planes throughout the multiverse. They may all appear different at first glance, but they're all connected in some way. Through this connection, the swarming slivers have proven to be one of the deadliest creatures known in MTG. And that, my friends, is the story of one of the creepiest creatures in magic, the slivers. As a part of this 13 Nights of Magic Halloween special, for this video I'll be giving away a copy of the ultimate sliver itself, Sliver Overlord. It's a powerful sliver with the ability to fetch more from your deck, making it the caller of the hive mind. If you want to enter for your chance to win this card, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video and be a subscriber to the channel. At the end of this 13 video series, I'll announce all the winners in a special video. Remember, each of these Knights of Magic videos offers you a new chance to win a different card. So stay tuned to see what other Monsters of Magic are offered during this October. This series and all its giveaways are brought to you by my sponsors at abugames.com. ABUGames.com is one of the leading online stores for all things magic, and I really recommend you guys checking them out. In any case, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please consider throwing it a like and share it with your friends. It goes a long way in supporting the channel. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next Night of Magic.